was recently shopping for laptops for my work and I ended up with this particular laptop. This is an Dell XPS 9570. This has great hardware, uh, latest processor, um, good uh, hard drive size, a uh, good amount of RAM and a graphics card. And it's also a 4K touch display. Um, and the thing is, this comes with the Windows 10 operating system. Windows 10 is great for office productivity, um, but it's not great for doing other things. Um, so I was browsing through Dell's website while I was buying this laptop and I found that uh, Dell actually sells a laptop which it calls developer edition that comes pre-installed with Ubuntu. That is kind of very surprising. Um, so they have been doing this for the last few years. Uh, so this means that Ubuntu is uh, a very good operating system for developers. So that's what Dell is trying to push. Um, here I'm trying to highlight what are the different uh, user base of Linux operating systems. So developers love Linux, scientists love Linux, people who work with cloud computing and system admins, they love uh, Linux operating system and Linux operating systems everywhere. It's in your Chrome OS, it's on your servers, um, it's actually even in the bundle as a tiny little uh, operating system that can root your phone and it also powers most of your home routers or you can change the firmware to run Linux so it's basically a computer that manages your Wi-Fi. So until now there were uh, very few options to run something like Linux on Windows so there was Segwin um, and there was this bash shell that was bundled with mobile xterm so these were like really lightweight compatibility layer that these two softwares were providing for people who wanted to run something similar to Linux on Windows using the Bash shell. But there's a new kid in the block and uh, Windows calls this the Windows subsystem for Linux. And uh, this has come uh, into existence since um, June or July of last year, since uh, the fall creator update. So if you have this already installed, so all you have to do is just activate this particular uh, section in your operating system. And I'm going to leave the links below. Uh, Windows has very good instructions on how to actually activate uh, Windows uh, system for Linux. And once you activate it, you reboot your computer, you go to your um, Windows store, and then pick your flavor of Linux that you're more comfortable with. In this case, I just, uh, picked uh, Ubuntu. So once you have that installed, uh, you just open uh, PowerShell or you open a command in your uh, start menu and just type in bash. So that will open your Linux bash shell. So here you can see when you type in more slash etc slash os release, uh, it's actually a Ubuntu installation and then you type in top and you see that this is just running bash and uh, so this means that it's kind of very lightweight and the best part is uh, you, you can run a lot of your softwares on top of this bash shell. And one of the caveats that you can see here, it's not running a Linux kernel. So sometimes you might require a Linux kernel or you were doing some kind of hardware based um, coding. In that case, this particular um, Windows subsystem for Linux may not be helpful for you. Um, so here I use this for all sort of things. So this is when I'm trying to code something in um, Arduino inside platform IO, I can use gzip to actually uh, zip my HTML files and I can use uh, the hex dumper that is xxd to actually create uh, the hex format of this particular uh, file and then I can include that as a header. So basically I can do all that. So this is actually a platform IO's bash shell that I'm actually able to load in. On VS Code um, bash, I'm able to install a platform IO as well uh, in order to compile certain um, Arduino scripts and also I, sh I should be able to run pretty much any kind of Python script or um, some kind of JavaScript and stuff like that. So this is kind of very helpful when you're trying to code something and you require Linux for doing something really quick and which is not feasible currently under Windows. Um, so this is kind of like you can even run Node.js uh, as well and uh, run different kind of uh, programs that you're looking for. Not only that, on the same bash, you just open mobile XTERM and you can actually run 
X window. So this bash mobile X term comes with X server. So basically anything that has um, the X windows uh, usage, you can run uh, run the WSL. Uh, on top of that, you just issue the command that uh, invokes your GUI and that opens up the GUI window. So this is just one of the software that um, some of the people in my field use, which is for analyzing some kind of data. Um, there are other approaches as well. So basically, uh, you can actually install a virtual machine on Windows 10. So initially, there were just two choices. So there was this thing called VirtualBox and VMware. And now VMware has moved into cloud computing and they're doing completely different things right now. And VirtualBox was acquired by Oracle and they're doing something very similar. And you can install VirtualBox and you can install some version of Ubuntu or any operating system that you like. So it actually emulates a hardware and you can install whatever you're in interested in. And since the Fall Creator update, Microsoft has also included a virtual machine uh, managing software called Hyper-V. So we're going to look at uh, how we can actually use this. And we're going to look at what Canonical, that is the mother of uh, Ubuntu, has been doing to actually um, get this into the Hyper-V. So the re latest release by Canonical is something called Canonical Multipass. And this was released uh, uh, a few days ago. So the release version is 0 0.05. And here they have different um, releases for different operating systems. So what this is, is actually, uh, if you just want a fresh Ubuntu installed in just by hitting a command key, that's what you would do. This is a lightweight VM manager. It has minimal overhead and it fetches all your images from Canonical automatically. It runs on Linux, Mac OS, OS X, and as well as your um, Hyper-V on Windows 10. So this is a new addition. So all you have to do is just download this multipass.exe, uh, install it, reboot your computer, then open a PowerShell and just type in multipass version and then just launch it. So initial launch, it'll just give a weird name to it. And this is uh, the name of your VM. Uh, this takes a while. So what it does is it tries to install the latest version of Ubuntu LTS uh, onto your virtual machine that it just created. Once you have it installed, once it's done, it takes around 20 minutes or so. Uh, initially, you can then start and stop this particular virtual machine by using the start and stop command. And here you can actually see the status of what the virtual machine is in. So every time you start it, you will it'll bind it to your external IP. So this is great. So basically, once you start it, you can then just type in multipass shell and the name of whatever it has given it to your um, your uh, multipass installation, you get into your Ubuntu um, core here. When you type in htop, you see that this is running a full-fledged kernel. So this is not a compatibility layer like WSL. So this is actually running full-fledged Ubuntu on your um, Windows machine. So here you can install anything you want. You can do any kind of hardware development or software for a particular hardware and things like that. Um, again, you can manage this particular uh, uh, installation by opening the Hyper-V manager. Just go to start, type in Hyper-V. This thing will pop up here. You can assign the different kind of hardware. So this looks very similar to the virtual boxes uh, interface where you can assign different hardwares. You can then also share your clipboard and things like that. So it's kind of very easy to do these things now. Um, and we have come a long way since Windows and Linux were separated. So this is great, but this also comes with certain issues because this is brand new. So sometimes you will get that it does not have a proper installation done. All it do is reinstall Multipass and then it fixes itself. And recently there have been issues with it not able to actually um, connect to um, outside network with a name on it. It'll access the IP addresses. So this means there's something wrong with the DNS. So again, this is something that they're still working on. There's an open issue about it. But uh, you can easily circumvent that by putting, uh, in this case, I'm just using a Cloudfares DNS server. So this will take care of pretty much all the requirements. That is, uh, you can then access Google and Canonical and
anything on the internet that has a name on it instead of IP by just supplying this particular name server that is the DNS server. So again, go ahead and try it. This is brand new. Um, so if you have an issue, open an issue with Canonical and they'll try to fix it. 